we create machines to make every experience more real. Because the best feature of a PC gaming machine is the power to make you forget it's there. All right, hello everyone, <clears throat> and peace of Christ to all. Uh, I'm sorry for the advertising in the background. This is from the website I am watching right now. Uh, today, uh, we have some, uh, you know, some funny things happening around the world. Uh, first of all, we will start from what is called the Arab Summit. The foreign ministers, uh, the Arab of uh, what it's called the Arabian, uh, uh, whatever, corporation, whatever you want to name it. Uh, they meet together in an urgent meeting to see what they can do about what the Trump he did. And you know, I was listening to um, to those uh, speeches one by one, and I found it very funny and very much stupid. You see, all those speeches, uh, they are sometimes like, it's kind of a comedy. As an example, the idiot, the, the, the toy of uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the, more, the minister of of, uh, of Lebanon, he said we should put economic sanctions on America. <laughs> I mean, this was one of the most funny speeches ever. Imagine this little bunny. He want to put sanctions on USA. Anyway, so the speeches was very funny and very unique, and I love it, actually. It was like a, a, a comedy show. And I was sure that every one of those ministers, those Arab ministers, is looking at the other guy saying, man, you, you, you are beating me in hypocrisy. And the other one saying, Look, listen to the other guy, he says, oh, man, your speech is full of lies. I mean, not even one of them is not resembling a joke for whoever is watching, especially from the Arab. You know, me as a person who was born in the Middle East, and supposedly I'm an Arab too, I never saw a bunch of liars as those leaders. You, do you know how many summit they have against Israel until now? Thousands. And not even one of them exceed anything except the speeches. You know what speeches is about? Those people, they do speeches. But I found the most funny comedy speech is what announced today by the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Look what this guy, he said. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, this is this is really it's a comedy show. He is what? The militia armed forces are prepared for any possibility in Jerusalem. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, this is the, it's a comedy. You see the Muslims, you know, I want to say to the Muslims, Trump, he made the decision to move the embassy. You are, your armed forces, brother, your arm, armed forces prepared to do, uh, to do uh, attack on Jerusalem now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, if, the, if the Israeli army farted, this guy and his country would disappear. I'm serious. I mean, this is what, what militia. I mean, go and see. You see, if if all Islamic countries they ha they launch a war together against Israel, and the, the Israeli made them shish kebab together. I mean, do the Muslims? I mean, I think the Muslims are under the influence of um, cocaine, heroin, hashish. What's wrong with those people? And as long as you are brave, I mean, what do you mean you are ready? 
They took Jerusalem already long time ago. Hello? Abdul, the Jews, they took Jerusalem long time ago. Huh? But let me tell you about the nature of the Muslims. Nobody do make speeches as much as Muslims. When it comes to actions, all of them they have only gas, which is not from real natural gas, it was from eating too much beans, American beans. If those Arab really they are what they say, and those Muslims, they will not wait for a second to take Jerusalem from the real owner of Jerusalem, from the Jews. But because they knew they cannot do anything. So in the front of their citizens, they make some speeches. It's a propaganda. You know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, I am a president. I am a minister. I want to win the election, the coming election, or etc. If there is an election. Suppose in, in Malaysia there is an election. So in order to win the elections, people, they will ask me, what do you do? What, like, what did you do when uh, Trump, he did this? He will say, you remember? Brothers, sisters, you remember I said our armed forces is ready. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> oh, I love comedy. I mean, seriously, I love comedy. Uh, you know, Iran of an 80, 90 million citizen, and Egypt of 100 million citizen. And Syria of 25 million citizens, and Iraq of 30 million citizens, and Saudi Arabia, and you know, you name it. And not even one of them dare to fart. And who is the one is talking is the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Let us see what uh, the Prime Minister of Malaysia is going to do to the Jews. Hmm. I'm thinking. He will be caught buying camel urine from the Jews. And he will stop watching porn. Made in Israel. Hmm? Because I saw a Muslim guy saying this would this I saw I, he saw a video porn made in Israel. So what the Muslims will do? I mean, I mean seriously, Muslim, what, what's wrong with you? What you will do? Here we go. You have a summit. Okay. All right. So and what is next? After you did have a summit, what is next? What what do you want to do? You made the speeches, okay, fine. Now the species is finished, and what and, and what is next? Huh? I mean, you fooling who you, you you idiots? Lying to yourself, lying to your people, lying to who? All of us we knew you are a bunch of puppies. And like look at this, it's an urgent summit. It is what? Urgent. Oof. Oof. When you hear the urgent, you see those guys, maybe they will announce war tomorrow. <laughs> it's urgent. It's urgent. Hmm. But I find it the most funny speech. I did not hear uh, like all of them. I heard some. It was the Lebanese uh, scumbag. Uh, this guy is like, uh, he, he is speaking in the, in the mouth of Hezbollah. Uh, he said, we should put economic sections on America, what what he will do? He want to put economic sections on America. Who who like, who is talking? Lebanese foreign minister, you idiot! America just gave you not long a time ago five hundred million dollars to help you. All of you, Jordan, just a Trump last week he signed. 490 million dollars something like this to jordan all of you are angry even saudi arabia is getting assistance from usa you believe it egypt is giving two billion dollar from usa every year those guys they want to put sanctions in america 
what does that mean exactly? <laughs> you see, Russia, and we know how powerful Russia, they did not they did not even dare to say we will put sanctions in America. <laughs> I love it. Oh boy. Uh, speeches of jihad but do they dare to do jihad this is the question burning cars burning tires throwing rocks oh throw rocks as much as you want you want to send to send you more rocks they you know like just to make their people happy hamas they send a few rockets which is like firework at the Israeli hoping maybe we can kill a child or two and that will make us look like heroes and then the Israeli they made a serious respond saying listen Abdul Abdul listen to me carefully Abdul look what the what look what the Israeli said IDF warns further Gaza rocket will be met with severe response and what Hamas did right away, they hide under the ground and they stop farting. <laughs> the second they heard that ID, IDF is promising a severe response, and you know what the Israeli, when the Israeli see, say severe response, it just means severe response. It doesn't mean seven up or Pepsi Cola. The same exactly what happened to Hezbollah in Lebanon a few years ago. You see Hezbollah before he used to attack Israel from time to time. And because the stupid Israeli government, they are, you know, most of them, they are politically correct. Uh, you know, they attack back like little ones here, there. They don't do serious, severe respond. But when the Israeli did severe respond to Hezbollah, since that time, Hezbollah don't even dare to fart. They don't. And by the way, the website I'm viewing right now is the Times of Israel. You know, in the Middle East, we have bad roads. Why? Because the mayor of the city says, Inshallah, next year we will fix it. We have bad electricity. Because the Minister of Energy, he say, Inshallah, we will uh, buy more equipment. We have buy, bad uh, education because Inshallah, we will build more schools and we will get laboratory. We have everything is bad because everything in the Middle East and in the Islamic countries is based on Inshallah. And Allah never will. I mean, if, if Allah will, we will do that. And Allah never will. Never. I mean, what we can do? You see? The only countries they are getting a little bit advanced is the one run by foreigners. As an example, Dubai. All the country is running by the British people. Everybody knows that. Everything. The management is the bridge and the the rest of the service is run by foreigners uh, Filipinos uh, you from everywhere actually if you go if you go to Dubai you will not find a citizen there you might spend a month there you will not find a citizen in the country imagine the whole country does not have a citizen where are they where they go this is why the country get a lot better than the rest of them because they are dependent on the foreigners otherwise the whole country will live with inshallah inshallah now inshallah we will have victory over israel inshallah we will destroy america inshallah isis will put their flag in the top of the white house you know but just by the way the, the Iraqi government they announced today that they have victory over ISIS <laughs> they are the one who have victory you're right <laughs> 
uh, remember when ISIS was 40 kilometers away from Baghdad how the Prime Minister like a puppy called America to send their army back you remember they was asking them to leave 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 and the American left when ISIS were 40 kilometers from Baghdad they found that inshallah is not working so they call America to come back this is what they do always even they are not the one who did victory over ISIS the same as in Syria Hezbollah they will say to you Hezbollah we have victory over over ISIS shut up you idiot it was the Russian if not the Russian in in uh, in Syria and the American in Iraq uh, ISIS will eat you alive all of us we knew that nothing is real in the Muslim world it's like a fantasy show those people are dreamers you know uh, here we go the others come back Obama warns American to protect democracy or risk following Nazi Germany <laughs> Guys, this guy he is angry because Trump he, he he announced Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So if you announce Jerusalem, I mean, look who's talking. What the Nazi did? The Nazi killed the Jews. They did not kill Muslims. The Muslims were in the army of the Nazi, and you are one of them, you filthy idiot. And even Muhammad he said, "I will expel." The Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. Do you see the hypocrite? I mean, is still this guy he have a voice? The Muslims they did something else. Yesterday they prayed in the front of the White House. Like 50, 60 of them, they gather in the front of the White House and they bend over. And they start saying, Inshallah, Trump will lose. Inshallah, Inshallah. And you know, it's okay. You know, let Allah help you. It is, it is a, a, the hypocrite show. So, what the praying in the front of the house mean, Abdul? What exactly that does? Go pray from now until, you know, what about today? You don't want to do it today? Abdul, where is where is the Abdul? Why only yesterday? Today, what about today? Tomorrow. I want the Abdul to go in the front of the White House every day, because this is what is going to bring Jerusalem to the Muslims. You Abdul, you bend over your ass to Allah for the last sixty years, and you are losing air war after war after war. What's wrong with you? Should I show you the speeches of ISIS saying uh, Allah will give us victory and they start quoting Quran? And then at the end, when he was caught, the guy was quoting Quran, a missile came in the in the in the middle of his uh, video camera, and for sure he became pieces, pieces upon him. What's wrong with those people? Uh, what else? What else? I mean, we have uh, obviously Islamic countries and Muslims and many of. Uh, what happened to this website? It's not moving. I heard this, this kind of website when they have like those scripts. Okay. Leaving for Paris, Netanyahu slams European hypocrisy in Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, the European these days are hypocrite to the Muslims, but every one of them knows <laughs> that any word he said he don't mean it like every every stupid idiot if those European leaders he says something he don't mean it himself but they are being hypocrite so they will look like they like okay we are the peacemaker huh? those are the evil ones the Israeli and the Trump they are the evil they are the one who's looking for war we are not we are the peaceful ones what a bunch of idiots Just uh, few years ago, you see, if if you remember, if you remember history, I mean, we're not we're not talking about old history. 
if you remember just history few few years ago you will see that when uh, when Serbia went in war against uh, the Muslims in Sarajevo because they want to divide the country all European helped the Muslims against the Serbian and supposedly nobody have the right to divide any country this is what they did with Russia but when it is about Serbia it's okay to divide the country when the Spanish just two weeks ago the people of uh, Barcelona they decide to vote for separation from Spain all European Union condemned that but in the case of Serbia it was okay they support that even they send the army to fight side by side with the Muslims in the case of Ukraine no way we will not allow the Ukraine to be divided so it's like a depend on our benefit you know it's about hypocrisy this is the truth those leaders they have like a, I don't know what they call it in science when, when a person he have a double personality so he is something in the morning and something else at night the same as Muhammad so it, it depend depend with the topic is about what and who it's not about uh, like uh, taking a stand of something they believe in no absolutely not uh, even the Prime Minister of England who was just a few a few weeks ago in Israel praising Israel promising Israel help etc she said she is against the decision of a Trump I mean what's wrong with those people all of them they go to that all of them they go to Israel and they kiss the, they kiss the ass of the Jews and I say that literally but in TV there's something they say something different now I don't consider this guy as a president really I mean this I think the president is his wife the wife who like to show her panty every five minutes she move her legs on the chair what a shame for people anyway like uh, seriously today it was like a comedy show I, I wish you guys you know Arabic and I wish I can play for you the, uh, the, the, the the Arabian summit as they call it so you can laugh you will you will you will die from laughing I mean the speech is, is hilarious Israel have no rights then the blah 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 inshallah alhamdulillah wa ismillahi wa alhamdulillah wa allahu akbar wa allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidna muhammad wa allahu like hubi wa sinna shish kaba falafel hamas and after that what happened abdul save your time and i want every abdul of you to send a fax or tax or a text or, or or an email or a phone call to this guy his name is Hisham and tell him excuse my language I have to say it I don't like to use those words but I have to say it say to him either your armed forces are ready for real or you are an a-hole his air forces his armed forces is ready hey okay and when we are going to witness the attack, Abdul. When the first airplane from Malaysia is going to attack Israel, is that soon? Like tomorrow, next week, next month, maybe New Year? Huh? I mean, who is the donkey here? Are you fooling your people, you idiot liar? What? A, I mean, those people are a bunch of scumbag. But but this is telling me how much they don't respect their people they consider you know the, the muslim leaders they consider the muslims are a bunch of donkeys because those speeches either they are they they mean something real or it is uh hocus just to fool us i mean to fool, if i am a citizen in that country what why my prime minister he say our armed force is ready for the situation of jerusalem why he says that if you don't mean it he, he he's trying to fool who He's trying to fool the citizen. He said it was our a brave move to express the nation disagreement toward the issue. Mm -hmm. 
how brave you are. Wow. And I, as the defense minister, is confident that we will uphold any instructions from the top leadership as well as the young the Parton among Dean Chong Shim Shun Sultan Muhammad Vim Jung Kong Vim Hong. And what does that mean? What does that mean, Abdul? We have to be prepared for any possibility. The ATM has always been ready, really. Are you sure? <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, <coughs> oh boy. <clears throat> you know, if we count how many speeches the Muslims they made against the Jews, uh, trust me, the number of their speeches can bury Israel. I mean, if we if we consider the the, the number of words they said against Israel we can say it's enough to bury israel from here to the moon so you know the the funny about them they knew that they are just saying fake statement they don't mean they what they say but they say it and what make it more funny none of their citizens say to them stop you bunch of scumbag liars we know that you will do nothing and you don't dare to do anything why nobody why i mean don't you have a shame? Go right now to Google and search for the Arabian Foreign Minister summits about what it's called Palestine. How many of them? Hundreds. The only time the Arab they agree upon something to be taken into action if the action is against an Islamic country. I'm serious as an example just a few weeks ago uh, not a few weeks ago two months ago I think right two months or three months something like that the Saudi they made the the Gulf uh, summit uh, agree to be to be caught uh, Qatar but nobody did make an order to be caught Israel all of them they have a relationship and that the carpet with Israel all of them the Saudi, the, 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 the Qatari, the Emirati, the Bahrain, you name it. All of them. Protest in Asia against Jerusalem. If, 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 even in Asia, my friend, even Asian who have no idea what's going on. Abdul, who is from Pakistan, he have the right in Jerusalem now. <laughs> Just because he's a Muslim. <laughs> Our city is Jerusalem. What's your name? My name is Zakar Naik. Where are you from, sir? I am from Bangladesh. And why do you think Jerusalem belongs to you? Because I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Question, Zakar Naik. Who is the one who built Jerusalem? Uh, the Jews. So how did how is Jerusalem become, become belong to you? Uh, because we took it one day and we, the Muslims we Muslims if we take something we don't we don't give it back <laughs> Oh, but hey Muslims do you know why it's called Jerusalem? I mean why the name why the name is Jerusalem? Why the city does not have an Arabic name? The Muslims they use the word Al-Quds, but even that word is not an Arabic name what does that word mean, Abdul? Anyone knows? Where the name is coming from? I mean, all you, you see all the names you see in the map in the front of you. None of them is an Arabic name. What is the capital of the scumbag? Well, he called himself the president of the Palestinian Ram Allah. Ram Allah. Abdul. Who is Abdul can explain to me what Ramallah mean? Hmm? Rama Allah. Any Muslim can tell us? What does that mean? Is that an Arabic name? No. Do you see the name of Allah there? <laughs> uh, 
it is not really about the name of Allah, but you know the name have nothing to do. Uh, uh, have nothing to do with the Arab. All those names uh, have nothing to do with the Muslims or the Arab. You know, even the Muslims. You know, we showed you two weeks ago or a few days ago. Actually, there's a video I made uh, three days ago uh, about the Pact of Omar. Omar is the first Muslim, first Arab who enter into Jerusalem as an occupation, and that was in the 700 after Christ. So, seven centuries after Christ is the first time the Muslim they came as an invasion. So they themselves are an occupation. They have nothing to do with this land, and this is the truth. You see, if you go, if you check uh, check ISIS map, let me show you ISIS map. Hold on, just to make you understand the logic of the Muslims. <clears throat> Muslims they believe any land they took it is the land of Muslims even though now it is not in their hand even it's not in their hand so this is this is a map made by Isis let me show it to you which is the it, this is an Islamic map this is this is reality you see, all this territory in certain time, all the black area, is con conquered by the Muslims. Do you see how huge it is? So now the Muslims, they consider every territory of those are Islamic land. For Muslims should not give what they take ever. Even though that this is not their land. So look. Here you will see that Spain, the name of Spain disappeared, became Andalus. Hmm? And all this territory here is called Khorasan. All the uh, Iran, half of India, etc., all the way to China, etc. All right. Uh, and here is Oroba. This is this is the territory of the Muslims. And like today, the filthy Erdogan. The, the president of the Turkish he is giving a speech about the occupation of Jerusalem but he himself is an occupation because there is no country is called Turkey Turkey is a country created a few hundred years ago after occupying our land our Christian land this is the Constantinia so they take your land from you and then when you try to take it back you are the occupation. You know what I mean? So like now the Spanish, the Spanish in Spain, according to the Muslims, they are occupation. But all of us, we know that this is, they are the one who occupies Spain. I saw a video about the, the Muslims, they are talking about the Spanish invading Asia. And they, like when they arrived to Philippines, and the video in the the Muslim video and uh, there was most <laughs> there was Muslims here and the Spanish here they came the ugly Spanish the disgusting Christians they came to enforce Christianity on us Allahu Akbar disgusting and Abdul are streaming Allahu Akbar but the Muslims have no problem that they invaded Spain itself and they occupied Spain for hundreds of years and actually I have a lot of respect for the Spanish for they were able to take their land back otherwise Spain will be an Islamic territory until now and Europe today will not be even Europe I mean the reason Europe is exists today this is why when some people they attack the Catholic I laugh I mean I mean there's nobody fought the cult of Islam as much as the Catholic this is the truth nobody suffer and shed blood defending Europe as much as the Catholic so when somebody says to you you know I'm not a Catholic right but when somebody says to you that uh, the Catholic is the founders of Islam you know this guy is is fooling you and he is a fool himself so either he's a liar and he know it's a lie or he is just a fool he caught he copy paste what he heard from someone else 
uh, <clears throat> you see, I don't, I don't judge the the Catholic today by the Pope. The Pope is a is a guy taking a position, and since long time, the Catholic don't have a real Pope. They have just a guy uh, who is hired for a job. But I don't judge the Catholic by a man. The same I don't judge the Protestant or the Orthodox by a man. All of us we can do sin, and we are sinners, and many of us do stupid things or we say stupid things too. I cannot judge the Protestant by saying we have a guy, his name is James White, and he is a Protestant. I cannot. This guy is an idiot. He has nothing to do with the Protestant. Correct? So everywhere you'll find a scumbag. Everywhere you will find somebody like Muhammad. There is a hypocrite, there is Political correct people, there is false people, there is fake people, there is all kind of people, right? So we don't judge a group by a person. I don't, me, uh, my name is a Christian prince, but do I present Christianity? No, I'm not. Not because I am not a priest or a bishop only, no, but because nobody present Christianity except Jesus. Do we agree on that, guys? Anyone will attack the Catholic, I will ban you. Okay? I will ban you from the text. Be careful. And here, I don't allow people. I'm mentioning things as reality. Uh, nobody, nobody present Christ except Christ. And nobody present Christianity except the person of Christ himself. You see, even Paul... Paul, how like who is uh, who am I to talk about Christianity? Who, who like who is more qualified to talk, me or Paul or Peter? Even those names, they are just servants for Christ, and if they do wrong, they do wrong, and they might do wrong. For nobody is perfect, except God. So for us, we have we have to appreciate those Christian warriors who defend Europe and defend many territories from this Islamic filthy disease fascist belief you see the funny there's many speak about fascism as we saw like uh, uh, the filthy Obama he was saying that uh, we should protect democracy from uh, following Nazi Germany but the filthy himself he will not dare to admit that the Islamic belief is million time worse than the Nazi of Germany I cannot compare between Hitler and Muhammad Hitler is one billion time better than Muhammad there's no question about that The Nazi are one million times nicer than the Mujahideen. If you don't believe me, go watch their videos. Go watch it. I mean, they are they are taping themselves. They are you know they are they are doing they are taping themselves. They are doing the video editing. They are putting the text for you. They are putting back in bright music, and it's all done by themselves, the Muslims. To show you how amazing Islam is and yet this is come back Obama he is warning us not to follow the Nazi Germany why because of Trump he moved the embassy to Jerusalem the question is isn't it the Nazi is the one who don't accept anyone except them and this is exactly what the Muslims are why they don't accept that the Jews are the ones who really build the city and this is a city belong to them and we took it from them is it Muhammad who said I'm going to expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula ethnic cleansing religion cleansing uh, right now as we speak there's not even a single Saudi in Saudi Arabia is registered as non-Muslims who is the Nazi have you ever heard of a country have one religion 
maybe the Muslim will say to you, yeah, Vatican, you idiot, Vatican is a country have only monks, stupid idiot. So it's normal, only Christians live there. <laughs> How many Islamic countries have one religion? Is that because they are Nazi or because they are not? Have you ever heard of a country don't have gays? Have you ever, ever heard of a country never have a lesbian? Have you ever heard of a country never have one atheist? So who is the Nazi, you filthy Obama? Can you tell me how many atheists is located or exist on Saudi Arabia? Can any Saudi go right now and post in Facebook or in Twitter that he is an atheist? Who is the Nazi? What will happen to him if he says so? A guy from the Ahmadiyya sect in Pakistan, he posted something in a Twitter. 4,000 Muslims in the university, and they are student university, they are educated, you see, educated ones. They gathered, they beated him, and then they took him to the fourth, fifth floor, and they throw him from the top of the roof, and the police is watching. And this fifth is come back, is talking about the Nazi. Who is the Nazi? A religion believe in one opinion, one book. Everything is one. You have to agree with Muhammad, otherwise we kill you. Even your name, it's not up to you. Even the food you eat, it's not up to you. Even the clothes you wear, it's not up to you. Even the language you speak, it's not up to you. And a nation who get offended by anything. And they are talking about Nazi. You make a cartoon, they kill you. I did not hear that the Nazi, they kill people because somebody made a cartoon about Hitler. Who is the Nazi? I mean, how shameful those people. This guy was a president for USA. It's not his fault. It's the fault of the dumb, stupid American who gave him an office for eight years. In eight years of his occupation to the White House, do you know what he did? He destroyed America. For eight years, nobody, nobody in the whole government says Merry Christmas. It was happy, happy holiday. He tried his best to destroy anything have to do with the Christianity. And each time he go in the speech, he make a speech praising Allah and praising Islam. And the stupid American, many of them until now don't want to believe that this guy is a Muslim. Stupid American. <clears throat> This is why, you know, I was so happy when Trump, he was elected. I don't know if any of you remember the day of election. I think my video is still there, but I think I put it in, uh, I don't know if it's still showing. Uh, the day of election, I was really so upset. Because all the news, if you remember, it was coming in, in a negative way that Trump, there is no way he will make it. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to go watch this. I mean, we have eight years of the filthy Obama scumbag, and now we, ha we have another eight years of the puppy of the Muslims, Hillary Clinton and her dogs. So I said, I'm going to go to sleep. I don't want to watch this. However, I did go and voted. You see? Uh, because I believe that I have to do my duty. It doesn't matter really what is going to happen. You don't stay at home and hope that the one you want him to win is going to win. You have to vote and then let us see. So I did vote even though 
I was not really truly believing that Trump is going to make it and if you notice that all the, the, the social media and the the and the the, uh, the filthy media of those uh, liberals they were trying to convince us hardly that Trump will never win and the purpose of this is to make us not to go and vote to make us feel desperate and to make us to to give up even though and I'm sure many people did not go to vote because they thought Trump will not win even though he won I mean I believe it's a miracle and the God he have our God our Lord he have his hand on it the puppies of uh, Hillary Clinton they were preparing for a celebration because supposedly they will win I mean come on it's it's a it's a guaranteed it's not only like it's not an option it is guaranteed they reserve the biggest hall in, in New York blah 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 and the decoration and firework will cost millions of dollars and Trump he have nothing ready for anything because everybody told him you will lose you are going to lose horribly And he won. And they are so desperate. You see, the order of uh, uh, Trump moving Jerusalem or the, the embassy to Jerusalem is something is done long time ago. The senators and the Congress, Democrat and Republican, they are the one who voted over it. So why the, the hypocrite are saying he is the one who moved it? He just agree and sign it. You know what I mean? Hypocrites. Now the puppies of uh, the, the Democrat. Uh, by the way, I like the Democrat name. I mean, it's fit perfectly. I don't know if you if you if you know how to pronounce it like me. Democ rats. You see, there's something about rats. <laughs> they are they are indoor rats, <laughs> and there is outdoor rats. So anyway. Those people, it doesn't matter what the Trump he does, they will give him no credit. This guy he brought billions of dollars to USA as an investment. He forced the Saudi to put 90% of their money in the pocket of a Trump. Still, he did nothing. He 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 forced many countries to change their deals with America. Uh, uh, he brought respect again to America. Every now, no, who dare now to pr to play with America? Who dare? You see, when 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 Obama, when the scumbag Obama, he went to Saudi Arabia, there was one guy waiting for him in the airport. One guy, and he is the mayor of the city. That's it. When Trump he went to Saudi Arabia. Half of Saudi Arabia was there and all the prince and princess and the king and his family and even his wife and his daughter They were waiting for him there Because those people they notice That we cannot afford to make this guy angry. This is not the same potato as uh, Obama We cannot play with this guy And not only he went there, they they brought for him sixty Islamic puppet to sit in the front of them, in front of him, and he was schooling them. He was what? Giving them his speeches, and one after one, each one of them is start you know like a, 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 a presenting. Uh, like uh, uh, you know the the respect to America this is the truth and the funny 
that even those who say that they are against Israel on TV they are not when they speak to the Israeli in TV they say something when they are meeting with the Israeli they say something else next year soon few uh, like uh, uh, next month I think right we have a Congress election all right and senators you will see all of them is try will start right away defending Israel <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> oh boy I love it hypocrites puppies dummy stupid liars especially those who call themselves Democrats and for the Muslim countries who they are condemning the behavior of the president of USA I have a challenge for you what about you kick the American ambassador from your country What do you think guys can the Muslims do that who is the Muslim I mean come on you cannot go and uh, wage war against Israel I understand you are potato I understand you are you have too much beans you have too much gas I understand can't you kick the ambassador of USA from your country you cannot even that one you cannot who dare who want to do it the Iranian we, we don't have embassy there <laughs> what's wrong with the Muslims okay I have another suggestion for them the Prince of Qatar he sent his foreign minister to make a speech refusing what happened from a Trump what about the Prince of Qatar he said to the American I want to kick you out from my country the biggest base of the American army in the Middle East is in Qatar <laughs> and not only that all the fees and the cost of the base is paid by Qatar which means we as an American we get the base for free totally for free we pay nothing so they make a speech against America and the American they are laughing they knew that you know in between between like between us I have to make a speech okay <laughs> come on <laughs> I have to call your names okay in the speech sorry <laughs> sorry brother sorry brother in the speech I will make I will call your names I will say America they are not justice <laughs> what about the Prince of Qatar he closed the, the, the Israeli embassy in Qatar I mean why you have an embassy for Israel can anyone tell me you see those are the leaders of the Muslims Brotherhood those are the friends and they are partners with Erdogan all of them they are Muslim Brotherhood why they have an embassy for the Israeli in Qatar so in the speeches we are against Israel the Jews blah 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 of zero zero and then in reality the story is different the story is totally different They always say something and they do something else. A Muslim talking about hate. You see, guys, when a Muslim, when a Muslim come to our chat, he make fun of you for being a Christian. And when you start showing him how stupid Islam and Muslims are, suddenly he asks you to be Christian again. <laughs> He make fun of you for believing in Christ as God 24 hours, seven days a week. The second you start kicking the ass of Muhammad, he asks you, is that what the Christ taught you? Is that what the Bible taught you? Is that what Jesus says, love your enemy? Huh? You are teaching hate now? What is the teaching of Jesus? You're making fun of me for believing in Jesus and now you want to believe in Jesus again? What's wrong with you? 
They spend tens of hours to make fun of you for believing in Jesus as God. The second you start kicking the ass, the red ass, sorry, of Muhammad, and showing them how stupid hypocrite them and their prophet and their caliphate, they start asking you again to be Christian. That's not a Christian of you to say so. So what is a Christian of me to say? Huh? Any Abdul? You know, me as a Muslim, I decide to be caught the hamburgers of America. I will not eat hamburger no more. Brother, do you eat hamburger? Yes. I used to eat hamburger, but now I'm going not eat going burger. Uh, brother, but do you know that hamburger is uh, pork? What? It's hamburger. Do you know what hamburger means? <laughs> There's a guy, they make an interview with him in the TV. He says, we should step, stop eating hamburger. I mean, how stupid those Muslims are. He want to punish America by stopping eating hamburger. I thought you Muslim don't eat ham. Do you know? I'm sure he does not even know what ham means. <laughs> hamburger. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, mm. Did I did I tell you the story about the guy who used to go and used to work with me? Do you remember it? I have a Muslim. He used to work, you know, like we are in the same office. Uh, he's at, but his 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 language, you know, what he what he do is very simple. Uh, he doesn't speak good English, and because I'm in, supposedly an Arab, so he go out with me when we go to eat, and we go to the restaurant, and then he ask uh, the lady she come or the waiter or waitress, and he asked them, "Do you have halal pork? Halal pork?" I laugh. The waitress laugh, and I thought really he's kidding. So for like six months. Each time he go there, he at he asks for halal pork, and they show him what dishes are halal pork. <laughs> and then one day he asked me, "What is that?" So I said to him in Arabic, "Khanzir," which means pig, you know, which means pork. But I'm using the Arabic word. He said, "Auzubillah, disgusting." I look at his face; he looks serious. I said, "Are you serious?" He said, "Yeah." You eat khanzir? You eat khanzir? I said, you idiot, you are eating khanzir for the last six months every day. <laughs> he said, me? I said, yeah. He said, when? He said, now you are eating khanzir, now, now. He said, what do you mean? So didn't you, didn't you ask her today to bring you halal pork? He said, yeah. He said, do you know what pork mean? He said, meat. I said, no, it doesn't mean meat. It means pig's meat. <laughs> so while he was eating, pork for six months and he asked for it <laughs> and he called it halal and since then wherever I go to any restaurant even like in Asia I said to them do you have do you have halal pork <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> you know once in the in the Philippines I saw a sign and the sign says halal so I went inside just to see if those guys actually I recorded I recorded this uh, you know uh, you know, I have a uh, I have a hard drive, external hard drive, and I was recording my camera. Uh, I save it there, and then I drop this uh, this hard drive, and now I cannot, you know, retrieve all those files. Anyway, so I asked the, the girl there. I said, "Do you have halal pork?" She said, "Yes, sir." <laughs> I said, "You have?" He said, "Yes, <laughs> here." <laughs> you know, all those restaurants they put halal. Because the Muslim, they like to eat whatever it's called halal. Just put put the word halal over shit and became a cake. Honest to God, I saw a sticker. It says halal over a shoe. I mean, how stupid those nations, those people are, to the point they need a sticker over a shoe. Are you going to eat the shoe? Halal shoe? Like, what's happening with you? But those, you know, many countries they know that the Muslims, they, they, all what they care for is sales, you know, sales. So they put they put a sticker of halal of overthink anything. Halal rice, <laughs> halal shoe, halal jacket, <laughs> halal underwear, <laughs> halal condom. <laughs> oh boy, uh, I hate myself. Unbelievable. Do we have any halal Muslim here? 
Actually, I remember a Muslim. He was sitting with the, with a bunch of hookers. <laughs> he have I think two hookers with him. They are that. Uh, they are like Saudi. Look Saudi, you know. So he have two hookers with him, or three. I forgot how many. Sitting in the table, and uh, uh, they are drinking whiskey and etc. And when the waitress came, he asked her, "Do you have halal food?" <laughs> He's drinking black label. <laughs> Look, they are very conservative. Conservative. He have a whore next to him. Huh? You can see her panty, and he have a black label in front of her, in front of him. And now it is time to be a Muslim. Do you have halal pork? <laughs> halal food? <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Okay. Actually, the uh, hookers in Islam is halal. You know, if you go to the uh, to the Quran, you know, you will see how the Quran allowed you to have uh, halal, halal uh, hookers. Yeah, it's halal. Do we have any Muslim here? Any Abdul? So I believe, excuse me, I believe that Trump in the coming year he is going to make a special halal pork for the Muslims. And he will force the Muslims to buy it. <laughs> and actually, this is what he's doing. You know, the funny about the Muslims, supposedly they hate us. And America is a kuffar country. And the, the government of America is the enemy of Islam. But all their weapon is coming from the kuffar. All their animation is coming from the kuffar. Even their gas and fuel is coming from the kuffar. I mean, they hate the kuffar, but they buy their phones, they wear their clothes, they buy their makeup, they drive their cars, and even we are the one who taught them. Or not? We did not taught them actually. They don't know until now how to make a road. Until now, in Saudi Arabia, they don't even have a sewage. Any one of you here have been in Saudi Arabia before? Who have been in Saudi Arabia before? Anyone? In Saudi Arabia, guys, in the morning you wake up, like you want to breathe, you know. You open the window to smell the early morning, the clean air. And the second you open the window, the smell of shit will be all over. <laughs> Until now, the most rich country of the Muslims don't have a sewage. They don't have a sewage. They have a hole for shit in every yard. So you, you know, excuse my language. I have to say it. I mean, I, can, I cannot call it yogurt. <laughs> it is shit. What you can do? So when Abdul he shit, he have a hole in his yard, huh? And this hole over time get full, and then will flood the yard, and then the flood will go in the street. So in the morning, when you if you want to walk, if you walk in the street, you have like it's like adventure, you know, over shit, <laughs> and you jump and you keep saying oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> but this is really, literally, <laughs> this is literally, literally shit, shitty thing, unbelievable. If you go right now and search for a flood in Saudi Arabia, just search, go to YouTube and type the word flood in Saudi Arabia. I mean, isn't it weird that in Saudi Arabia they have a flood? I mean, this is a desert. Like they have a rain once a while. But if they have one inch of rain, the whole city will be flooded. Why? Because it's a shitty, it's a shitty country. <laughs> there is no sewage. <laughs> Actually, there is a there is a city close to uh, <coughs> close to Mecca, close to Jeddah too. I think it's between them. Uh, there's this lake. You know, when we say the word lake, what what, what comes to your mind when we say the word lake? Lake. Anyone? Let me let me try to find it for you. Hold on, to give you an idea. <clears throat> oh. <coughs> let us see.
actually a few years ago last year I think they were afraid that this lake is going to uh, <laughs> is going to flood <laughs> Jeddah <coughs> they call this lake the lake of musk the lake of what musk you know what musk right it's like it's, it's something smell good like perfume Eesh. Eesh. wow oh man I can't believe it Eesh. huh but the fact this lake is a lake of shit oh I don't know I, I why we change our topic to talk about this okay here we go this is the lake we are talking about <laughs> <laughs> I mean you can tell from the color what kind of lake it is do you see the color uh, so uh, a few weeks ago uh, no sorry last year they were afraid that this lake is going to flood Jeddah and Jeddah will be covered totally by shit however look look at this picture here look do you see the flood of Jeddah do you see the flood of Jeddah? I'm telling you this. The, uh, oh, I don't know. The kuffar, my friend. The kuffar. The kuffar. The kuffar. The filthy kuffar. We Muslims are very clean. This is why we piss in every word in our in our world. You see, Muslims. You talk about dogs and you say dogs are dirty, right? Dogs are dirty. As an example, your prophet he said, if you see a black dog, kill him. Hmm? Okay, let me ask you something. One about one thing about the dogs, what they do when they are in the road, they piss around. They don't care who's around. He left his leg and he start pissing. All right. Question: Why you Muslims, when you walk in the street, you unzip and you piss, even if there's one thousand people around you? Who learned this from who? Did you learn it from the dog or the dog he learned it from you? I'm serious. Any Muslim can tell us? Who learned this from who? You did learn pissing in the street. Like puppies. And you don't care if a woman or a boy or a girl passing by. Or the dog he learned from you even the prophet he used to piss in the street and actually there is some hadith they are very funny <clears throat> uh. Let me show you. Let me see if I can find. <laughs> I just remember something. <laughs> I hate myself. Unbelievable. Let me show you this one. <laughs> oh, let me. I hope I will find it. That would be hilarious. <clears throat> Oof, I mean, look at this. You see, the reason the Muslims are so advanced of te in technology and science and space because they have a brain concentrating in serious matter. Read with me, please. I mean, read, please. For the sake of Allah, read, please. It was narrated. Hold on, hold on. This is this is something serious. We cannot. We cannot just play it like that. We have to uh, put some uh, uh, serious music with this thing. I mean, we cannot just go for for that, uh, uh, you know, without background music. Show respect, right? <clears throat> Narrated by Aisha. She said. Whoever steal you, 
that the messengers used to piss and you don't need to stand. Don't believe them. Please. Please don't believe him. For he would not. You're an idiot. You know, when I finished my degree in, in Islamic law, I called my uh, my parents to tell them, I fin finally I graduated. My dad, I, I got upset from him at that time. He said, oh, you okay, you got a degree in farting? This is what you are telling us? Huh? You got a degree in farting? I was really upset. I mean, I'm so happy that finally I finished my law degree in the stupid Islamic religion, and now my dad is telling me, okay, you got a, de a degree in farting? I was so upset. But later, I had to agree with my dad. I got a degree in farting. I mean, look at this. So now, if we ask the Muslim around the world to sit together and to discuss the serious matter about how the Prophet used to piss, I mean, can't you see how important that is? And look, look, look how Aisha, she is so sure that Muhammad, he used to urinate like women. <laughs> hey, Abdul, why Muhammad, he urinate like women? I mean, I'm serious. Why, why? As long as you are the one who opened the topic. Hmm. Any Abdul? Any, anyone? What? I mean, what is the secret behind this? There is something secret, Muslim. Do you think there is a science behind this? Okay, Muslim. Do you pee? Squatting? What squatting? I thought squatting is a game. Let us squat together. <laughs> the prophet, he never did. I mean, what? What? What's wrong with this prophet? Never, never. Not even once. Hey guys, why you did not share the link with in Facebook and Twitter? Come on, share it so more people they will come. Look what we are teaching you here. We are teaching you serious matter. Those things you will never discuss in your private life. I mean, this is serious here. Actually, Homeland Security, huh? They are going to acknowledge. The wisdom behind urinating when you are sitting, I will explain to you. Let us say you are a CIA agent and you are in a chase of a criminal or a terrorist. And then this terrorist, he starts shooting at you. So what do you do? To fool him, huh? you start urinating, sitting down. That Doing that will make you protected from his bullet because the bullet will go like straight up and you will be down. I mean, this is serious wisdom. And look how important that is to register in the books of the Muslims. I mean, the, the urine of the Prophet is a holy urine. And we have a duty, all of us, to learn how he do urine. Uh, by the way, is it true that the Prophet, he said, if you urinate, you better shake your penis three times? I tried, excuse my language, once, four time, it fell apart. <laughs> I have to glue it back. Abdul, why three time? Why? Seriously, why three? What will happen if you shake it four time? Are you sure that this is... <laughs> I mean, this religion is so amazing. And you know... We are going to burn the flag of America. <laughs> and the prophet, he used to urinate as a sitting, and he shake his penis three times. <laughs> oh, man. So, too much. Too much wisdom here. Too much wisdom. I mean, that's beyond your imagination. Any, do we have any Abdul? 
אני, אני אבדול. Not even one Abdul? I don't believe you. Ah, Abdul. Now he is thinking about the topic. Why the Prophet, he shake it three times? Hmm. I see. Any Abdul? No? Not even one. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm really disappointed. I thought some Muslims will call us and they will do something. If there's any Muslim wanna call, I will open my Skype. Hmm? Anyone? Hello? I don't know, look like the Muslims, they are busy burning the flag of America. Okay, there's no link, they can just, uh, my Skype is in the screen. Okay, let me open my Skype, hold on. <clears throat> Where is my Skype? But you know, they will not call me. I don't think a Muslim he will do that. First, for many reasons, his mom will not allow him. Secondly, uh, he liked to do squatting debate. All right, we are. We are here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I see somebody send me a hadith here in. Uh, <coughs> And let us see this one. I mean, you guys, you send me this hadith to read it, all of it, and I will read it now. <laughs> That's too much, my friend, too much. All right, what this hadith is. Yeah, this is need a time for itself. It's long. Same time, Muslim will not have an ability to exp to understand such a thing. Yeah, we will do it maybe some <laughs> some other time. Do we have any Muslim would like to call? Anyone? Noor Hani, how are you, Mr. Noor? Do you like to call me, Mr. Noor? Do you like to call me, Mr. Noor? And we have a nice discussion, me and you, about Islam? Anyone, any Muslim, feel free. By the way, I'm not against the Muslims. Seriously, I mean, I feel sorry for them. The Muslim, he is being deceived. He's a, he's a, he's a victim of this cult. I mean, how, this is a prophet of God, and we are talking about prophet of God. We cannot, this is going to be serious. Why in the world such a statements is appearing in the, in the in the Muslim books. Everybody pee. I mean, do I need to to write in my book? Okay, I'm writing a book now. Huh? It's going to be ready in a few days. I will I will I will start proofreading. Should I write how a Christian prince about the author how he pee? What do you think, guys? Should should I put in the introduction that the Christian prince, this is his age and he pee standing or sitting, and he shake it how many time? And uh, what his uh, favorite uh, underwear 
and uh, what kind of a toilet paper he like <laughs> oh boy oh. <laughs> let me introduce for you the author the author he like toilet papers it's made in Israel for many reasons because he want to insult the Jews okay he bring the toilet paper from Israel and he wipe with it so like the, like okay see what I can do for you yes I can't attack you yes our army is a bunch of cowards yes our leader they make speeches of jihad but they can't do nothing about it so look what I'm going to do I'm going to revenge uh, I'm going to buy toilet paper made in Israel and I'm going to wipe with it Allah Akbar. that's amazing any Abdul Those a Muslim would like to call me. If you call me, I promise you I will be nice to you. Which is against my nature. Anyone? <clears throat> hey, Maria, are you in Japan? Maria, are you in Japan? Text me, text me in Skype. I'm going to Japan soon. I'm serious. I want to go. I'm going to Japan, and and uh, uh, the only Japanese I know, Japanese language I know. I, I speak Japanese, by the way. I speak all languages almost, but Japanese I'm not too fluent. Like I know how to say Suzuki, Yama, Yamaha, Toyota. You know, uh, sushi. You know, you know what I mean. So, uh, <clears throat> if there's anyone from Japan, uh, text me, text me. If you'd like to invite me for uh, some, uh, who would invite me so, for some coffee in Japan? Even if you're a Muslim, I don't care. Any Muslim? Any Sasuki? Sasuki? I like Japan. Honestly, I love Japan. You see, first time I went to Japan, I took a picture of the bathroom. <laughs> I felt like I'm coming from a village, not from America. I mean, what's wrong with this country? Unbelievable. Everything was perfectly clean. You will teach me very easy? Okay, Maria, it takes me, takes me in Skype. Takes me, I'm serious. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to Japan soon. Actually, next month. I don't like to share my secret with people. I mean, like, what's, why I'm telling people? I mean, I should not say that. Did I say that already? I mean, oof. I don't know why I did. Uh, Nor you are shy. You are shy. I am shy too. Seriously. You know, last time I was speaking in front like of uh, 500 people. And I was really shy. I was like, uh, I don't know what to say. And they start saying to me, take it easy. Um, we have halal pork for you. Uh, they brought me a sandwich. I ate it and they said I want second sandwich and the third sandwich and then after that <clears throat> I Became brave You are an Arab call me call me Noor. Come on. Don't be shy. I mean what what would happen? We are talking <laughs> Let everybody hear your opening as an Arab Muslim lady Cool And I speak Arabic by the way it's true not my Arabic is not good as Muslims they say <laughs> I mean look at this guys Christian Prince he grew up most of his life in the Middle East and then the Muslim they make fun of my English and they make fun of my Arabic <laughs> so I wonder what is my language really <laughs> do you think I'm Chinese originally I look like one you know when I went to China uh, the the security guy he did not give me a visa he thought I'm a Chinese so he let me go I said hey don't you want to give me a visa like visa hello visa <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> do we have any Abdul here any Muslim who is in Japan if there is any 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 person in Japan 
you see those guys they are afraid now just to meet me in Japan because in Japan then they have to invite me to drink some coffee or tea and then they have to pay for it because I'm their guest <laughs> you see you see the point they they want to meet me but uh, they are worried about who is going to pay I will pay it's okay I will pay for it come on you know <clears throat> or you know what we will not pay we will claim that both of us we are refugee <laughs> Unbelievable. <clears throat> uh, you have a Japanese guitar, and what I will do with your guitar? G your guitar will speak for me. I mean, what I will, I will take your guitar with me as translator. I need a translator. I need. I need. I need uh, to learn how to take the train. And uh, uh, you know, uh, last time I took a taxi, it cost me uh, an arm and a leg. I mean, it's very expensive in Japan. <clears throat> And nobody speak English the same as in China in China it's horrible man you go to the tourism office you think what you think this is the tourism office I mean come on if this office don't speak English who's going to speak English <laughs> you go there uh, blah, 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 blah. she point her finger at papers in the front of you and she'd ask you like to take a brochure that's it you know nobody speak English the police don't speak English the immigration don't speak English nobody in the train station there is no English you will feel like you are lost <clears throat> so I'm going I will go to China and I will go to Japan and uh, possible I will go to two more countries maybe we will see anyone Hello. No, so no Muslims. So why I went to uh, a Skype? You guys made me go to Skype for no reason. Okay, I think I think the Muslims are not calling because we have this is in the in the in the screen about the Prophet urinating. Okay, let me change the topic. I will make it something um, far away from this topic. <clears throat> All right. Hmm. Okay. I know this one is not what we want. Okay. If look what we have in front of us. I mean, this is another serious issue. I mean, this is really something. Narrated by Aisha. I mean, Aisha, she can work definitely with CNN. And for sure, there's no fake news here. All right? There's no fake news. Uh, Maria, don't post your phone number in the chat. Come on, don't do that. Uh, you can you can send it to me in uh, in Skype. You see my Skype? You see my Skype? Skype, add me there, Debate TV, if you have a Skype. <clears throat> it's not safe to post your phone number in the Internet. Don't do that. Uh, anyway. So Aisha, <clears throat> always she have... Uh, Serious news, and I think she can work. She can be, uh, she deserves actually to have like a um, prize of journalist. I mean, look at this report. Oof. Look at this report. One of the wives of Allah Messenger, Allah Apostle, joined him in itikaf like the time of prayer. 
and she noticed oof, oof, oof. Mm, I think we need better, better background music for this we cannot play this without, without the music we have to respect the feeling of those the wives of the Prophet at that moment I mean there is something happening there we cannot just talk about it this is serious matter okay hey Muslim kid listen to this the prophet wife she said one upon the time one of the wives of Allah Apostle joined him in itikaf and she noticed she noticed what are you listening good good girls and boys she noticed that there is a yellowish discharge she noticed what are you listening perfect yellowish discharge and i am so glad that the muslim scholar he put between two bracket that it's coming from her vagina do you notice from where it's coming from where it's coming I am very sure that you are a bunch of Abdul this is why you keep saying aha I'm asking a question now don't say to me aha what the heck with those people I am asking a question where the blood yellowish blood is coming from here we go those are Muslims for sure Muslims are copy paste aha 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 all right now as long we've been informed that one I, I don't want to use guys imagine if, if I'm using a bad language you know what I mean if I'm using the 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 word to start with the letter P you know what I'm talking about this what it says there it's coming from her P you 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 know peace upon you <laughs> now I know what peace upon you mean oh if that's deep that's really deep don't you agree with me that this is deep thank you thank you for yeah are y'all following with me very much yeah I can tell unbelievable so she noticed that there is a blood and it is yellowish obviously she have an infection <laughs> By the way, the infection is coming from where? This woman she sleep with who? Oh, Muslims? This woman she get infection in her vagina from who? She have one husband. Let us think about it. Is it the prophet? No way. Must be the neighbor. <laughs> Why this woman she have a yellowish discharge? Any Abdul? And by the way, Muslims, can you paint for us a picture? Okay, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> you know that I'm very good in art, right? I I, I won the prize of uh, art uh, for the year uh, uh, two thousand seven hundred before Christ. So this is the wife of the Prophet. I mean, I'm so good in praying. praying. If look at this, I mean, this is pure <laughs> art. All right, and now she said to pray, and she noticed that there is something coming here. Hold on, I need to change the color. Sorry, it's red with yellowish, yellowish. Okay. So it's uh, like yellowish red, okay? So she noticed that there is something coming there. And now all the 1.4 billion Muslims, they have to read this and learn about it. Isn't it amazing? And you are telling me Islam is not religion for all nations? My friend, Islam even a religion for those who they are 
infected with SDD here we go the prophet wife she have a sexual disease and she is suffering from it and now because of the mercy of Allah she is sharing her experience with us but I would like to know how she was able to recover did she recover she stay like this forever what happened what about Muhammad and that happened only for one of them okay hold on this wife she put a dish underneath of her is that the same dish the prophet used to eat from i mean how many dish the prophet the muslim they say the prophet was so poor he used to have one dish hello my husband i made cheese kebab for you and some soup mm. The soup smells something familiar. Mm. Mm, smell like your. Uh, mm, mm. Yes, uh, my husband, uh, we have only one dish, and you know what happened yesterday? Al Akbar mean Al Azam? Uh, no, in our hand. This is false. Akbar mean bigger, my friend. Azam is Azam. That's it. You do not need to say Azam and Akbar. <laughs> As an example, if I draw this for picture for you, uh, uh, Noor, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some of my expertise in, in, in paint and drawing. Uh, I hope you will not be jealous because I'm so good in, in art. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't mean really, but uh, what I can do. So let us see here. Noor, supposed that she speak Arabic and she said, that Akbar mean Azam. Azam in Arabic mean a greater. Is that true? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Let us see here. I don't know what happened to my drawing tools. It's not working. All right, now it's working. All right. If I say to you, if I want to say to you, we have two balls here. Which one is Akbar, Noor? Which one is Akbar? What is the word we, we, will, we will use to say that this one here is bigger than this one here? What is the word we will use? Noor, are you there? Be honest. What is the word we will use? We have two balls. One of them is a small. And the other one is bigger. So what the word we will use? It's Akbar, right? So Akbar does not mean a greater. Don't fool yourself. Akbar means bigger, as simple as that. So in Arabic we say, هذه القرى. Let us switch to Arabic. <clears throat> Where is the letter the? <laughs> My keyboard is funny. I have to look for it. Okay. هذه القرى أكبر من هذه القرى. Correct. So why you are saying that the word Akbar mean? greater this ball is bigger than this ball and you speak arabic and i speak arabic so what do you say what do you mean you cannot get my point i get it to you you, you speak arabic don't you i even i type it for you in arabic the word akbar the word akbar mean bigger i just made a sentence for you this ball is bigger than this ball what is the word we use for the bigger akbar so whoever say that the word akbar mean greater that's a false translation this is a translation can be accepted from someone he's an american he is dumb he do not know what he's talking about somebody is doing copy paste akbar <clears throat> akbar is used usually about age 
size. Uh, let us say, uh, uh, or even it can be sometime for power. But the word great in Arabic is Azim. Any Muslim? Allah has 99 names, but you Muslim do not know what the first name means. What Allah mean? <laughs> Guys, look look how the Muslim they change the topic. Suddenly we are talking about about the names of Allah. We, now we we dump the name Akbar. Forget about Akbar. <laughs> the first game is not working, so we switch right away. Okay, Allah have ninety nine names. What Allah mean, Nurhan? Do you know what the word Allah mean? Who is a Muslim when I tell me what Allah mean? Any Muslim would like to tell us what Allah mean? They don't know. It's just a name. They learn it from non-Arab. They copy paste. Not even a single Muslim he knows. And here we go. I challenge you. What Allah mean? They don't know. If you go and search in the internet, they will give you all the kind of false definition. He is the greater. He is the creator. This potato tomato. This is not true. Who is a Muslim can tell us what Allah mean? Anyone? They don't know. Anyway, you can watch our my my last uh, day video. You see, when we make a video, as an example, if I notice that there's a video before it, I want people to watch it. That video, or I want to cut it, make it shorter so people they can download it. Uh, that video I had it for like a day or something and then it's going to be available again uh, I made a video two days ago and I noticed that the view is not what I'm expecting to be you know <clears throat> people they like to watch the last video only I'm not sure why no do we have any Muslim would like to call us Any Muslim would like to call us. Okay, any Muslim he don't like to call us. <laughs> I give up. I mean, what I can say? We cannot find a Muslim to call us. We cannot find a Muslim who will not call us. Should we call a friend? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, seriously, I feel jealous from those who find Muslims to debate them. In my scenario, I find no one to call me. I don't know. I'm not lucky. I don't know when my lucky day will come. And then now, never show up. <laughs> so sad. We have two dislike for our broadcast. Only two? I mean, that's disgusting. Where are the Muslims? Muslims, don't you want to do jihad against Christian prince? Only two dislike. I want you right now to pause the video, the link, for your friends in Facebook and Twitter and ask them to give dislike. Let us do jihad against Christian prince. All the Abdul. Anyone? By the way, by the way, when when one of us says we are worship Yahweh, Yahweh is not really a name. Okay, I want you right now to search what Yahweh mean. See, God, our Lord, He did not give His name to Moses. Moses asked Him, "Okay, I will tell my people who are you. What is your name? You are my Lord." But they will ask me, "What's your name?" So what He said to him? Did He give him a name? He told him, "I am." I am the one who exists by himself. There's no name can contain me. There's no name can describe me. All the names is the creation of a human being. It's just for him to comprehend things. But nobody can comprehend God, for God is a miracle. This is why Jesus himself is called a miracle. For nobody can understand and comprehend the amazing power of the miracle and how it happened. 
all right so when we speak about our God those uh, let us say uh, word is used in the Bible they are not really a name they are a description of the Almighty God uh, yes every name even names of a human being individual they are not names you can go and read like even Ishmael Abraham Isaac uh, Israel uh, Emmanuel uh, Gabriel Michael uh, it, it, there's no names really this is why the, the the Bible if you study carefully you will notice you are missing a lot of information it's like a, 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 a book of coding amazing Yeah, no problem. If no, she want to call me in Arabic, she can, but I have to translate then. No problem. She can call me in Arabic. And I will try to squeeze my Arabic to make it work because I'm watching too much Chinese movies and I forgot most of my Arabic. You know, next month I'm going to go to China and I'm going to go to Japan and then I need to learn some Chinese. But I hope this time I will be able to to load videos to you guys when I'm away, uh, because last time when I was in China, uh, in the area I was in, I'm not sure if this is the scenario for all of China. Google is forbidden. I could not even log into my Gmail account. The Chinese they are very. Uh, they watch over their internet very carefully. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if this is still the scenario or it's now it, there's more freedom. We will see. However, I've been told if I go to some areas like uh, five stars hotels, I can go to the lobby, lobby and um, coffee shop there. They have uh, Wi-Fi, which is uh, you know like they give them freedom because it's gone by done by satellite. So we will see. Any Abdul? Not even one Abdul. So that's it. We give up. You cannot translate anything or all the names you have in your religion are stolen names this is why there's no translation for them otherwise who is Ishmael what Ishmael mean what Abraham mean <laughs> even Abraham is not a name who told you that Abraham is a name you see that Muhammad because he's a thief he stole names he put them in his book and those names they are not meant to be a name they are meant to describe the person he put them in the book. Okay, for all the Muslims, what Musas mean? Any Muslim can tell us what Musas mean? They don't know. Every name have a meaning. If it's a name. Any Muslim can tell me what Musas mean? What Israel mean? What what uh, uh, Jacob mean? Huh? I don't know. What Sarah mean? What Eve mean? What Adam mean? And this is what happened when a thief he copy words from different book. He put it in his book. You ask him what those words mean. He don't know. This is why the Muslims even the think that the name of the father <clears throat> where is the letter okay the father of uh, Abraham his name is Azar <laughs> uh, 
they, they found a verse in the Quran the Muslim says that Abraham he sent to his father Azar so the Abdul he said to himself ah, Abraham he said to his father Azar so now we know the name of the father of Abraham his name is Azar <laughs> <laughs> I love it guys do you remember what Azar mean who remember who remember my previous videos teaching what Azar mean no one remember if no one remember I would be so disappointed foolish so imagine how foolish of the Muslims to think that the word foolish is the name of the father of Abraham <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> hey Abraham your father name is foolish huh? are you sure <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Welcome to the religion of the dumb. <laughs> the name of the guy have nothing to do with Azar. Abraham, he's saying to his father, are you a foolish guy? Are you a fool? Are you going to worship pagans? Are you going to worship idols? So, because Muhammad is a thief, he stole this word from a book written in Aramaic. So in the front of him, it says, Abraham said to his father, Azar. So now what the name of the father of Abraham? It's so clear. Obviously, brother sister. <laughs> this is what happened when you buy an, a, a fake iPhone. <laughs> Okay, Abdul. All right, all right, Abdul. <clears throat> so now, did you learn the name of the father of Abraham? What is the name of the father of Abraham? Ah! No, his name is Azar. Ah! No. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Azar, 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 huh? the name of the father of Abraham is Azar, huh? oh, potato nation, even your prophet do not know, so you get it from him, because he is a thief, and you believe that he is a prophet, imagine I say to somebody, I say to my dad, foolish, and then the, the, the Muslim, they say Christian prince, his father, his name foolish, <laughs> <laughs> oh, unbelievable they are so cute Muslims I wish I can grow you in my backyard but the city is not allowed in me I mean this is so cute unbelievable I mean you know the, I noticed by the way that the Muslims they have a special kind of intelligence and most likely they inherited this intelligence from their Prophet I'm serious because if you don't know the Prophet he is a deep thinker and this is deep I mean, this is seriously deep. Uh, I will give you an example. Do you remember the hadith about the rats? L let me let me share with you the rat story. It's very it's it's very touchy. Not about Democrats, rats. Okay, Democrat is Hillary Clinton and her uh, and her gang. Those are official one, rats. All right, look what the prophet said about the rats. It's amazing, it's astonishing, it's so deep, it's so smart, it's so intelligent, it's it's full of wisdom, it's it's philosophy philosophy. Even the Greek, even the Greek, they could not reach such a knowledge. Uh, okay, hold on. Where, 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 where is the oh uh, look at this? Look at this story. Oof. Oof. Each time I read it, I feel like I ate like five kilograms. Of a spice food and I feel burning I mean this is super intelligent 
here you will see the signs the signs of intelligence of the prophet his IQ is super and he is watching so carefully look at this the prophet said a group of the Israelist Israel, you know the Israeli were lost nobody knows what they did look how humble the prophet look how humble he do not know he have no idea or what he know that a group of Israeli are lost <laughs> Muhammad who told you I mean they are lost how you know about them anyway anyway look look here look at the action but I don't see them except that they were cursed and changed into rats unbelievable Oof. 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 <laughs> this is so tough <laughs> uh, <laughs> unbelievable that that is something unbelievable what what is that somebody's calling Bangladesh Police Department yes my brother you have a missing son give me a description okay all right since when he's missing last week I think my friend we found your son we captured a rat yesterday and he looked exactly like your son and so, alhamdulillah he is in our hand and he is safe <laughs> oh boy <laughs> i mean muhammad he discover that those are rats are jews Oof. Oof. that's beyond science that's like space ideas it's like star war it's like dr evil i can imagine muhammad he is putting his uh, little uh, tiny finger in his uh, mouth and he's saying hmm a group of uh, jews they were lost uh, and we don't know what they did exactly Hmm. But I think um, they did uh, cursed uh, by God, and he made them rats. Uh, if, 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 that's very hot. I mean, look, look at this. If there is females, and they are beautiful women listening to this prophet, I mean, immediately they will get so excited, and they will fall in love with the prophet wisdom. I mean, you know, you do not need to see a man how he look like. To fear in love with him if you are a woman who is looking for wisdom look at this brain this guy if we analyze the weight of his body I guarantee you that he is 99.9999999 shit <laughs> excuse my language <laughs> I know you were expecting me to say that he is a brain. No, he's not. This is the most stupid statement ever a person who claimed to be a prophet he can come with. Now look how Muhammad he found out that those guys are a bunch of rats who so they are Jews. Look at the wisdom, man. How much Muhammad he is deep in his thinking. Look at this. Now Muhammad he told you that they are rats. He found, he discovered they are rats, but now he want to give you the reasons. So look, but I do not see them except that they were cursed and changed into rats. For look at the reasoning. You see the logic philosophy. This is the philosophy. Philosophers don't say things and they stop, they give reasons. For if you bit, if you put the milk of a she camel in the front of a rat it will not drink it but if you put 
the milk of a sheep put it in the front of it it will drink it if, if, if. that is so deep I mean imagine the prophet in this moment he is thinking squeezing his head putting the data together but him using his high capacity brain which is so fast by the way the prophet brain obviously he was connected to the internet which is located in Afghanistan <laughs> You know, Muslims, I'm not going. I'm, don't think I'm making fun of you. I mean, but excuse me, your prophet is so dumb and so stupid if you believe in this garbage. So, are you Muslim trying to convince me and your prophet tried to converse or convince me that those rats they used to be Jews and now after they became rats, they still Orthodox Jews? <laughs> Unbelievable. Those are Orthodox Jews rats. Unbelievable. I mean, look, they are bad. And Allah He cursed them, but look how serious in religion they are. They are still following the religion of Moses. <laughs> that is incredible incredible. This is astonishing, my friend. I want to convert to Islam right now. I cannot resist the intelligence of the Prophet. If we practice the logic of the Prophet of the Muhammadan, that if you don't eat something and another animal don't eat it, that's mean you are from the kind of that animal. I will practice that with the Muslims. Muslims, donkeys don't drink beer. Muslim don't drink beer. <laughs> if we put water in the front of a Muslim, he drink it. If we put beer, he don't. If we put beer in the front of a donkey, he don't drink it. If we put water, he does. Does that mean both of you are donkeys? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I found after deep thinking that donkeys cannot be Muslims. I will tell you why. Donkeys are smarter, and I can prove it immediately based on the theory of the Prophet. If we put a camel urine container in the front of a donkey, do you think he will drink it? You guys tell me. What do you think? If we put a container full of camel urine, do you think the donkey will drink the urine of the camel? He will not. A Muslim, he will. So, who is the smarter? <laughs> Unbelievable! I, I never thought that a donkey, even he, even a donkey, he can beat a Muslim in intelligence, based on the theory of the Prophet. Donkey, don't drink camel urine, and you Muslim drink it. Eesh. Ish. by the way guys by the way I don't want to forget something as long we spoke about donkeys I love donkeys and actually donkeys are not stupid <clears throat> at least donkeys they might be let us say they are animals you know they are programmed somehow but donkeys they have something maybe many of you do not know and I will tell you a story happened to me who this is a long time ago like 300 years ago when I was a youth uh, once we went in a village it's a mountain area and you know we are a bunch of young kids we want to climb and etc but the, the adult they were uh, afraid that we will lose our way to come back um, so a villager he said take the donkey with you i said what the donkey have to do with coming back he said don't worry when you are done you want to come back home just let the donkey and he will take you home <laughs> you believe it and honest to god this is exactly what happened 
we went in the world and we there's no way we know how to go back we just follow the donkey and the donkey he took us home so we laugh at donkeys they are stupid but donkeys for sure can be smarter than a human being sometime and they can find things we cannot find and now the Muslims they are losing the ground with donkeys donkeys don't do what Muslims do there's no donkey it doesn't matter how stupid he is he is going to drink camel urine he is a lot smarter than this actually all animals before they eat any food they smell it and if the smell is bad it gives them a clear sign that this is a poison it's bad as an example if you have a food in the refrigerator and you want to be sure that it is fine to eat if you have a cat put it in the front of the cat the cat will not eat it if the food is not good to go Now, as long we spoke about donkeys, let me show you what Muhammad said about donkeys and about Muslims. Muhammad, he said that any Muslim, should I, should, should I show you this one? I think, I don't know, I should not. I don't know. <clears throat> Look at the wisdom. Look at this. I mean, look at this, man. Are you looking with me, Muslims? Look at this. It was narrated by Abu Huraira. <laughs> Are we talking about cats? Do you know what Abu Huraira mean? Abu mean a father. Huraira mean cats. So this guy is the father of the cats. Why they call him a father of cats? Because the cats are all over him. And why he have cats all over him? Because Muhammad told them that cats are clean and dogs are dirty. Which is stupid to say. The fact a bite of a cat can be a lot more dangerous than a bite of a dog. You can go right now and search it in Google. And a bite of a cat can make a very serious infection a lot more scary than a bite of a dog. However, not our topic. Muhammad S A W S M G F F F F F F 16 said, Does the one who raises his head before the Imam? Not fear that Allah may turn his head into the head of a donkey. What? If, I mean, this is science. This is rocket science. I mean, Muhammad, what's wrong with you, Muhammad? You are saying to the Muslims, aren't you in fear that if you raise your head before the one who is leading the prayer, Allah will make your head as a donkey? I mean, how you can scare them with such a threat if all of them are donkeys? Already they are donkeys, otherwise they will not follow you. Who in the world want to follow such a stupid a prophet who says such a stupid things like this unless he's a donkey already this idiot is scaring his followers making them believe he want them to put their head down so they will not lift their head up until the one is leading the prayer he finish so in order to scare them he fabricate fiction stories that if you raise your head up before the imam finish the prayer in front of you before he raise his head, Allah will make your face a face of a donkey. Hold on. I think the Prophet was saying the truth. I, I think this time I was wrong. I got busted. Sorry, guys. I have to apologize from the Muslims. I mean, how I missed that. Let me show you. 
حالا I don't know how I missed this. It's a proven scientifically. If you don't believe that the prophet was saying the truth, look at this picture. If, I'm not sure how I missed this one. I mean, this is not even smart of me. Look like Ahmed in Ajad. Once upon the time, he was praying and he left his head up before the Imam. And what is the result? As you see, here we go. And those Christians are making fun of the Prophet for saying the truth. Look at this. By the way, guys, many of you ask how I look like. <clears throat> I don't look exactly like him. He is more handsome somehow. You know, uh, like, let us say I have I have the same beautiful eyes. All right, and I have the same beautiful nose, and the same. Hold on, hold on, uh, and I do this too. Like each time a Muslim he talked to me, like I do, like what? Like wh what? What wh what he just said? Huh? Are are you serious? Uh huh. I mean, uh, there's too much. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. What 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 the prophet just said? Did did he just say the one who raised his head before the Imam Allah will make his head the head of a donkey? Oof, oof, oof. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Yeah, it's a Christmas time, man. Come on, just be nice. Do we have any Muslim here? He don't like what we are saying. Here we go, Norhan. She is saying to you that we Muslims are very nice people and we just slaughtered a cow. <laughs> And why you slaughtered the cow? Ah, Nurhan, she slaughtered the cat, the cow, sorry, to do what the Quran did say. Anyone knows why the cow slaughtering is important? According to the chapter of the cow chapter, Allah said uh, in the story of a Musa, like there's a guy, he, he's a Jewish guy, he killed a guy. All right, so Allah he asked uh, Musa. He asked Allah, "How we know who is the one who killed this guy? How we know?" So Allah told him, "Okay, go and slaughter a cow, and get the tail or the or the balls or the meat of the cow and beat with it the dead guy." Do what? Beat with it the dead guy. Oof. Oof. Harder. Harder, my friend. Oof. We need more hit. <laughs> okay. So after they hit the guy with the meat of the cow and the tail and the balls and the testicles, etc., the guy he woke up and he said, Oh, sorry, this is not him. <laughs> wrong recording, wrong recording. Uh, the guy, he woke up and he told them the name of the one who killed him and he died right away after that. Oof, oof, true story. Guys, honest to Allah, if I open my camera, which I don't have, and I will show you the, the reference that I have, you will see how much how much meat I have from the cow. Do you know why? Not because I want to eat it. Because if anyone in the neighborhood, he die, I go and I hit him by the cow and he come back to life. 
I mean, this is super duper science. Who can beat that? Who? Nobody. Nobody. So, are we going to have any Muslim to call us or not? I am so disappointed of the Abdul. I mean, look, today is not my day to broadcast. I said to myself, as long the Muslim they make a summit to attack Israel by speeches, <laughs> as usual. You know, I heard that the Muslim they decide to start throwing gum at Israel, and this is what the gum will do. We have 1.4 billion Muslims are eating gum as we speak. So if everybody throw a gum. That will the gum will make the floor of Israel look like a glue. The Israeli soldiers will not be able to run after the Palestinian when they kill an uh, innocent Jew, and this is the only way to freeze them in their place, and then we attack them back. Mm. I see. All right, I think it's time for me to go back and work in my book. I'm trying to finish my book. Before I leave the country, you know, before I, uh, uh, before I fly. Uh, anyway, during the time I will be away, uh, I'm going to make uh, videos. All right, I, I will find a way to load my videos. And actually, I know some places they have a fast internet. Uh, the only place which is going to be not easy to load video is China, but I think we can find a way to do it. All right. Uh, I can tell the Chinese president that I'm a Muslim, and right away he will give me free internet. <laughs> in China, guys, last year, last year, when I was in China, I saw in the newspaper they show it to me the Chinese uh, that if you see uh, anyone he is with a beard, a Muslim with a beard, report him immediately. To the police, you believe it? I'm serious. Unbelievable. So the Chinese are very much aware of the cult of Islam, and they are, you know, they go after them very good. I can download Opera. What Opera is? What is Opera? You mean Opera the browser? I'm using Opera browser right now. <clears throat> yeah, but I cannot do live broadcast from China. That is for sure. I, I might be able to do load videos, but there is no way you can do a live broadcast. I don't think so. No. Uh, anyway. Thank you, my friend. And I want to remind people that I, we need your support during the time I am in my trip because now my spending will be not tripled, will be four times more. So I hope that those who are helping us with donation, they will uh, they will uh, stay supporting and they will not uh, hesitate to keep uh, helping during my trip. My trip will be away. I will be away for a few weeks. Uh, anyway, I will update you. And I will try to post videos. Um, as I said, depend on the location. Uh, I will try maybe like once a week or once or one video every few days. We will see. You know. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I will have an ice trip for sure. Uh, first of all, the first thing I will do, uh, I will go to a Muslim restaurant in China and I will ask for halal pork. <laughs> Oh, really well. uh -uh. What we will do anyway, you know, uh, uh, actually, I'm really happy that I I have people who knows what I do in everywhere in the world Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Japan, China, Korea, uh, like not even a single country I've been to, and they do not know. And they did not watch my videos. Uh, now people do not know me by by face because, as you know, I don't uh, play my camera, etc. But <clears throat> it's not really hard to find those who they know you. 
you know uh, I remember once uh, I was in a coffee shop and there was a guy he have a Bible in front of him and looked like he is doing a study you know like he have a paper and he's taking notes blah blah so uh, you know I opened a conversation with him <clears throat> And then he said to me, you know, your voice is kind of familiar for me. <laughs> I said, my voice? He said, yeah. It's okay, well, maybe. And then he said to me, I think I know you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> I should have changed my voice from now on, wherever I go. You know, I will like I will speak to people. Say, uh, "How are you doing?" Uh, this way, they will not know how in the, that this is a Christian prince. You know, my Bible is corrupt. Uh, Nor hand, I like I like that. Seriously, because you are training the Christians that the Bible of Allah is corrupt, and that is additional proof that your God is a stupid God. For if the Bible is sent by Allah, how stupid of you to say the Bible is corrupt? Are you kicking the ass of Allah right now, Norhan? Are you saying to the Christians that we have a stupid God, his name is Allah, and he sent a book, it's called the Bible, and it's corrupt? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you stupid idiot. When you say your Bible is corrupt, you are a fool because the Christians don't have a Bible. This is not our Bible. This is the book of God. You see, if I hold the Bible in my hand, this is not my Bible. So if you Muslims believe that it is Allah who sent this book, the author of the book is the one who owned the book. Not a human being who will die after 20 years or 30 years or 60 years of his life. So you are saying to the Christians, because you are dump, copy-paste Abdul, Muslim, eh, that the Bible is corrupt. So you are saying to us that your God is a false God. He, can, he, he keeps sending books, but he cannot protect them. That is additional proof that your God is a false God. The Muslim immediately, when he starts speaking about the Bible is corrupt, he is telling you that the Bible of Allah is corrupt. This is what he meant. Okay, what's my problem? Anyone can tell me what is my problem? This is the Bible of Allah is corrupt. What is my problem? Why you are even saying that to me? Take your problem. To your stupid God who sent 124,000 Bible and all of them they are gone yeah she will play dead now <laughs> this is what the Muslims do when I talk to them they sleep in their side and they stop moving their tail you know they play dead <laughs> your Bible is corrupt your Bible is corrupt. What my Bible? This is the Bible of Allah, supposedly. <laughs> so thank you for saying that the Bible of Allah is corrupt. If Allah God, if He is God, nobody can corrupt His book. Right? Anyone understand what she is saying in English? Somebody translate for me. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, I think we have enough for today. I better go. Uh, go back to my uh, uh, work in my book and guys my coming book you guys you will love it it's about it's about sexuality but you will not like it because it's about sexuality no this is not really our intention because of the stupidity in the Islamic books there's a collection of stupidity and most of it is coming from the Prophet Muhammad the amazing prophet the philosopher the genius the wise the hilarious the garbage collector <laughs> she speak broken English more than my broken English We Middle Eastern sometime in, 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 in we go to the restaurant instead of saying can you have a can you give us some uh, soup but we say do you have soap we want soap and uh, 
<laughs> I like to have soap as a start. Okay, sorry, you can go to the bathroom, it's there. The restroom. Oh, no, 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 I want to eat soap. <laughs> sorry, I want to eat soap. Soap, soap, you know? You want to eat soap? I understand. Why you want to eat soap? Soap, like, you know, before we start eating, like, you know, uh, soap. Welcome. Anyway, so I want to say thank you guys for being here. And next time, uh, uh, when we have a broadcast, we are going to be sure to serve all of you. Orange, Pepsi Cola, even beer. And uh, I I am going to try my best. And I think the reason I cannot find Muslims in my uh, program to call me because we are not providing enough camel urine. We are short of that. So I hope we will able to order some and we will able to get them fresh and hot. And then maybe we can get more Muslims uh, to call us. So I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, feel free to download my videos, cut them pieces, make them short, 15 minutes, etc. Or you can download the whole video and share it with your friends wherever you want. YouTube, Facebook, anywhere. The more you do that, the more you help us to increase the awareness about this cult. And your children will not be fooled by a stupid fool. He's a Mohammedan. Try to fool him and make him believe that Islam is a true religion and Allah is a true God. Islam is nothing but a joke, stupid uh, cult, bring nothing but hatred and violence, and this cult, wherever it goes, disasters goes with it. And if you don't believe me, go and search history. Even the golden age, the Muslim they speak about, it was actually a very dark age for other nations because the Muslim, they took their wealth. While the Muslims, they have 10,000 slaves in their palaces for sex. Those are 10,000 widows. And there's hundreds of thousands of orphans because the Muslims, they kill their families. When the Muslims, they build their palaces, as they say in Andalusia, those was from the money they stole from the Christians. And by the power and the force of the slaves who they are enslaved by the Muslims. Ibn Khaldun he said and he spoke about the Muslims, Arab, he described them as savage, who they are willing to destroy a palace and a library to take the wood of the palace and the papers of the books to cook in it. Those they don't build palaces. It was they are Christian slaves who build it. Until now, the Muslims are not capable of producing anything to the world. Everything you have in your hand is made by non-Muslims, regardless if they are Hindus or Buddhas or Christians or Jews. But none of it is made by Muslims. And that is for a reason. For they are not blessed. Even the oil they have is a curse. The oil they have destroyed them and make them more ugly. The fastest growing numbers of people who they are infected with sexual disease is Muslims because of their oil they got the money and they do sex tourism and then they come back home and they infected their wives and their children's when a Muslim he got money he don't go to visit a museum or an ancient building when a Muslim he go to Egypt he is not interested to see the ancient buildings of the Pharaoh. He go immediately to the bar, looking for some hookers. They don't have the blessing of God. And those who don't have it, they will not enjoy peace 
for the devil is in their heart and they cannot live in peace this is why we see Muslims killing Muslims everywhere go and see how many Muslims was killed by the Jews in the last year or by the Christians and how many Muslims killed by Muslims how many wars wage by Muslims against Muslims go and see what happened in all Islamic countries and what's happening right now how many Pakistani Muslim was slaughtered by Muslims last year how many Shia slaughtered by Muslim Sunni last year how many Sunni slaughtered by the Shia last year or last week or even yesterday those who don't have the blessing of God they will never enjoy anything they have it doesn't matter how much money they have even that money is going to be a curse upon their nation and everything we see around us is a proof in that so my advice to the Muslims if you want to get the blessing of God go back to your nature as a human it is not a human to kidnap and to be hidden it's not a human to rape women it's not a human to throw people from the top of the building it's not a human what Islam does and teach and it's not a human to drink camel urine the one who favor urine over wine is a stupid not a human and by the way just for your reference you can go right now and search that what Jesus says about drinking a little is a bless for the heart it was absolutely true I saw an article just last week it says that drinking wine but not too much don't drink much little it is preventing many serious illness starting from the cancer and many many diseases and not to finish and not to ignore that if you are a person who is suffering from a heart problem wine can help you so if you think drinking camel urine is the wisdom of God what about you go and you study yourself what the urine do for you when you drink it it's a pure acid and poison and this is why the body rejected very stupid of you to believe it blindly of a blind man who claimed to be a prophet of God thank you very much guys for watching and for being here and we will see you tomorrow at 4 30 p.m tomorrow is Sunday 4 30 p.m at New York time at New, York, New York time we will be here again as usual so until then God bless you and may the Lord bless you all of you and see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false I mean to that bye bye